You may have heard this somewhere, but you haven't heard it from here yet. What did the president do? Number one, he used goons and criminals to infiltrate peaceful demonstrations to get reasons to unleash violence against Kenyans. Now this sounds serious. He used the police to unleash terror on young people. OMG. Resorted to abductions, forced disappearance, torture, killings, and mutilation of bodies of the Kenyan children. Dude, this is genocide. This is unfathomable. Neighbors and friends identify the bodies of their loved ones brutally murdered and bodies dumped in quarries or wrongly registered to conceal murder by the state. Someone's got to pay for this. I mean, can you imagine if you did this? Off with their heads. I have stood by parents and communities burying young Kenyans killed by President Ruto and his rogue policemen. Over 60 people dead right now. There's no compensation in the world that anybody could pay this back. I can only imagine the demands that Babu is going to put on this guy. We demand from Ruto these bare minimums. Pay to the families who've lost their loved ones. One million Kenya shillings for funeral expenses. Funeral expenses, okay. Number two, compensate the bereaved families at 10 million Kenya shillings each for the excruciating pain, agony, and suffering you have put them through. 10 million shillings for my dead child. Nah, I don't accept. Pay all the medical expenses for the young people who have been brutalized by the police upon your instructions. Oh, that's fair. I mean, I can cut off your leg. Here, here's a wheelchair. I just bought this for you. Enjoy. Punch in the eye. Here, I just bought this fresh ice pack and it's cold. Here, put that on. Toodaloo. Release all the young Kenyans that you abducted and continue to hold in communicado. Eh, that's a phone call away, no problem. Drop all the trumped up charges you have pressed against innocent Kenyans who are arrested while calling for good governance of their country. Another phone call. Not a very steep price to pay for genocide, would you say? I mean, even Netanyahu would take this deal, and he was targeting his enemies. <coughs> Keep in mind that all Ruto really has to do is say, hey guys, I got these demands here, um, add another 500 million to the finance bill, and we're gonna tax these poor bastards so that the Kenyans themselves can pay for this. The family members of the victims, the victims themselves, they'll be paying for this. It's not gonna come out of my pocket. You can agree with me or disagree with me. Fine, we can be happily incompatible. We can agree to disagree, but hey, let's watch this together. Grab a drink and one love. Let me start by expressing my heartfelt condolences to the families that have, have lost their loved ones these last few weeks. I feel your pain and I know it will take time before meaningful healing comes. To those nursing injuries from the brute of Ruto's forces, in hospital beds and at home, I wish you quick recovery. May God console you. Kenyans, it is now exactly one month since the young people of Kenya came out in large numbers to assemble, demonstrate, picket, and petition their representatives to reject the finance bill 2024. The Gen Zs and millennials and Kenyans of goodwill, some young in body and some young at heart together, stood together to say no to an oppressive tax regime. They also spoke unequivocally that they want a reformed government. The young people came out to demand that their president confront these challenges. Instead, what did the president do? Number one, he used goons and criminals to infiltrate peaceful demonstrations to get reasons to unleash violence against Kenyans. He used the police to unleash terror on young people. Resorted to abductions, forced disappearance, torture, killings, and mutilation of bodies of the Kenyan children. The president would winked us by withdrawing the finance bill, but continued to implement its draconian provisions. He deceitfully dissolved his cabinet on grounds of incompetence only to reappoint the same crooks.
He completely refused to listen to the issues raised by Kenyans and instead he, ra he raided the opposition to appoint cabinet secretaries in a bid to weaken oversight against his government and to gain cosmetic stability to consider the next general election and to ignore this and the next generation. No Gen Zs were nominated in, in this cabinet. No gender rule considered, thereby discriminating on women. Persons with disabilities were not considered. The only disabilities which were considered were mental disabilities, which were considered in the current cabinet. And don't get me wrong, I am not bashing Babu here. He seems like a very good senator. He really does. I mean, he sounds, sounds pretty legit. But I just don't think that he really... He sounds like a politician, too. He, he just sounds like a politician. That's why I had to cut 90% of this video out because it was all political pandering to his base and, and against Ruto on other things where, honestly, they've been happening forever, and he's probably responsible for a lot of it. But I, I, I don't think he's a bad guy. I just don't agree with his demands. And I don't think that the parents or a lot of Gen Zers will either. But... I could be wrong. Let me know what you think down below, please. And hit that like and subscribe button while you're at it. And we're going to continue this conversation. Fellow Kenyans, these last few weeks, I have been to the Mucharis in this country helping desperate parents, siblings and relatives, neighbors and friends identify the bodies of their loved ones brutally murdered and bodies dumped in quarries or wrongly registered to conceal murder by the state. I have stood by parents and communities burying young Kenyans killed by President Ruto and his rogue policemen following insane commands of people we put in office to secure our lives. As I speak today, so many parents and relatives are still distressed and emotionally broken as they try to Search for their young children abducted by this dangerous regime. President Ruto has turned Kenyans against each other. Now he is trying to isolate some tribes and some ages and some regions to divide us some more. I want to say categorically that President Ruto is the real problem in this country. He is the stumbling block to the modest reforms Gen Z's are asking for. Before sharing power in a cosmetic overhaul, we demand from Ruto these bare minimums. Pay to the families who've lost their loved ones, one million Kenya shillings for funeral expenses they are incurring. Number two, compensate the bereaved families at 10 million Kenya shillings each for the excruciating pain, agony, and suffering you have put them through. Declare a mourning day and hold a national funeral service mass in honor of the patriots you have killed. Pay all the medical expenses for the young people who have been brutalized by the police upon your instructions. Release all the young Kenyans that you abducted and continue to hold in communicado. Release them today. Drop all the trumped up charges you have pressed against innocent Kenyans who are arrested while calling for good governance of their country. Mr. President, you don't seem to get it. Young Kenyans are mad and angry and stressed and they can't believe you just can't get a single thing right out of their modest demands. So when you really think about it, this is how society is being programmed to respond right now, where the powerful and the wealthy can get away with murder and pay their way off, be okay, find a way out, and be on their merry way. But when it comes to the average person that's the victim of these heinous crimes that the powerful in government or in general uh, society with lots and lots of money can get away with these things without any repercussions whatsoever. Well, really, it's just a just a, a pat on the on the wrist, and and it kind of goes, you know, takes them out of their comfort zone and makes them feel uncomfortable for a little while. But to me, that's the way society seems to be running right now, and they're asking us as people 
you know, random citizens, uh, the lower class citizens, to accept it and be happy. Kenyans want, number one, a competent government capable of getting things done. They want government positions to be well thought out, well structured, and staffed with public-minded, based on meritocracy, not kakistocracy, qualified citizens committed, who are committed to a common good. They want you to address the rampant lo looting of public resources. They want you to stop interfering in the running of state departments, give the bureaucracy space to do what they should do. You don't know it all, and you cannot do it all. But as we ask you to do this, just know that the young people of this country are not afraid of you. We don't fear you. We expect you to serve us. Remember, the most important office in a democracy is the citizen. We, the people, can choose to exercise our sovereign power directly. May God bless you. May God bl remember our country, Kenya. Thank you and God bless you all. Any question, omission, commission? Is this the roadmap to life that we're going to be handing over to our children? Children, if you're wealthy, do whatever you want. But if you're not, whatever somebody else wants can be done to you. Seems that way. <laughs>